I, underwear taker today, I finally have water in my shop. In my last episode, I managed to complete the countertop and two of the three drawers. Now that the glue is truly dry, I can finish the sanding of those drawers. When I'm done, I brush a coat of finish right away. As I did for everything else, I brush two coats and wait several hours in between coats. Now those two openings have their drawers, but not this one. But before I can think of making this drawer, I have to install the sink. The first thing I do is find the exact spot I wish the sink to be. Then I mark it just before cutting the hole. I finish the job with the jigsaw. I'm using a bunch of boxes to hold the sink all in place while I cut the corners. Now I can try it in place. Since it's perfect, I mark the faucet hole and drill it. Now that I know the space the sink will take, I can make the last drawer. Okay, it's a weird, weird shape for a drawer, but I still need to cut the bottom grooves. After reassembling it, I trace the bottom shape on a piece of plywood, add the groove depth, mark the real size, and cut it. After a last dry fit, just to check everything, I disassemble it again and sand what's need to be sanded. Then I can glue the last drawer. While the glue is drying, I can install the sink. I begin by spreading a line of silicone under the sink rim. After putting it in place, I secure it. After cleaning the excess silicone, I can install the faucet. Then I can connect the water pipes. When the glue is dry, I finish the sanding of the last drawer. Just like the other drawers, I varnish it right away. I have all the drawers, but no doors. I'll take what's left of this sheet of plywood and make my doors with it. I begin by cutting it so each piece fits inside its opening. Then I cut both of them in two. Now I can finally use my triangular moldings that I made over 10 days ago. But to do that, I need to install the bit which will make the triangular shape into the plywood.
when all the shapes are routed out, I can glue the edge bending. One done. Three more to go. All done now. But before I can do the same thing to the drawers, I need to install them. I start by screwing the rail to one side. But on my weird drawer, I need to drill another hole. Then I can screw all the rails and install the drawers in place. Now I can cut the drawers front. After checking that they're all the right size, I can route the edge shape. And glue the edge banding around them. The next day, the glue is dry and I can remove the painter's tape, which was acting as clamps. But it's obvious that my edge banding is bigger than the plywood. To fix that, I begin by sanding the solid wood flush to the plywood. Now that it's all at the same level, I can cut the excess wood on the table saw. It's now perfect. I just need to do the final sanding. While I'm at it, I sand the edge also. I need to do the same thing for all the front of the three drawers. Now I can brush their finish. While the varnish is drying, I go inside the house and start working on the water itself. I begin by drilling a hole into the wall so I can pass a water pipe. Then I can connect all the pipes. It's quite easy with PVC pipes. With those valves, I'll be able to have water inside the shop. But I won't open them right now. When both coats of varnish are dry, I can mark the placement of the drawer's pull. Drill them and install them in place. As you can see, the front of the drawers are lifted up with a tin shim. After screwing a screw into the drawers from the front pull holes, I can open the drawers and add screws from the inside. Now it's time to take care of the doors. After drilling the inch holes, I can screw them in place, being careful to screw them straight. To screw the hinges to the cabinet, I need to add a spacer. Since the cabinet is varnished and I don't want to waste any time, I glue those blocks with 5 minute epoxy. While the glue is curing, I install the drawer's pull. Then I'm able to install the doors. You probably noticed that I've put my muffler on. It's so noisy using an impact driver inside a closed space. The last thing I have to do is to glue and screw the doors stop. Now I can take care of the last pulls. I bet you remember that I've already made the shelf for the big section. I need to cut it to size and install it. Uh, it's easier said than done. My hinges block 
are in the way. I don't understand. I did the exact same thing in the miter station. And I had no trouble at all. After managing to get it out of there, I'm using a small router to remove part of the block. That's the block's new look. But at least now, I can put the shelf in place. Now, I need to cut strips of plywood for some of the drawer separator. When the separators are done, I can start on the removable trays. After a dry fit, I can disassemble it and sand the interior of the trays. Then I glue the trays. When the glue is dry, I route a rabbit around the bottom. After cleaning the round corners, I glue the bottoms. When the glue is dry, I can sand the fingers and brush all the pieces for the separators. When I'm done, I have a dirty brush, but no water to clean it. It's ridiculous. I have everything to clean it, except water. So I decide that it's time to open the water valve. And for my own comfort, I even turn the water heater on. Okay, a water heater is a little overkill, but when I look at the rest, But now at least I have water, and when the air is out of the pipes, I can shampoo my first brush inside the shop. When both coats of varnish are dry, I can install the drawer separators in place. And with that, my water cabinet is all done. I'm very happy and it looks great with its waterproof countertop. I'm sure this will be helpful. I also have more storage space. We never have enough storage in a shop. I hope you like the construction of my water cabinet, and I'm pretty sure it will pop up in the background of future episodes. But at least for now, the mutt will have her own grooming station. As for us, we'll see each other in the next episode of The Woodpecker.